Hi everyone, it's Monica and welcome back to TaylorMade Cards for You. Well, with Christmas behind us, I thought it was time to pull out some of my Valentine's stash and put together a few Valentine's Day cards. Every year after a specific holiday, I'll take all of the scraps that I've used for my creations and I'll put them into a bin and I'll label that according to the holiday. I did that for my Christmas stash and of course last year I did it for my Valentine's Day stash. And this is a nice way to start out my projects without having to go out and uh, purchase new items right away. A lot of times the new releases haven't started when I want to start my crafting. So it's nice to go ahead and dive into my stash and get those holiday cards going before all of the items come up for sale. This is also a good time for me to take stock, to take a look at what I have and what I might need because I know probably in a couple of weeks, we're gonna start seeing all of the Valentine's Day stamps and papers and all of the little pieces of ephemera that we know that we're gonna to wanna to buy for our projects. Now I have some kits that I had put together years ago that I found in my stash, so I'm gonna go ahead and pop those open and use those, along with some other embellishments that you can see that I've bagged up through the years. Now, when I say through the years, I literally mean through the years. Some of the stash goes back several years, and I've decided in 2021, I'm not going to be a hoarder and hang on to items for years and years. So whatever I don't use of this stash this year, it is going in the recycle bin, or I might put together some bundles and offer them up to you guys. So what I did is I went ahead and I took some of my bigger pieces and I cut them down to an A2 size uh, sheet to create some A2 size cards. And I think I have about four pieces here that we're going to be working with. I may not create all of the cards on screen, but we'll certainly put some together to give you guys some ideas and start your inspiration for your Valentine's Day cards. Now layering is nothing new to me. It's something that I do every year for every season and occasion. I think it's an easy way to put together quick cards using what you have already in your stash. This is a great way to not have to spend a lot of money and to go ahead and come up with some designs that will work for the season. Now when I'm putting together my Valentine's Day cards, I don't necessarily keep it to the Valentine's Day theme. I might make it more of a love scene or a romantic scene or even a friendship scene. That way I can use the cards throughout the year. Valentine's Day is a very short window uh, and I know not everybody sends out Valentine's Day cards. So when I do create these types of cards, I like to create them so I can use them for all occasions. Some of these cards might be able to be used for birthdays like I indicated or even anniversaries. So when you're putting these together, keep that in mind. You don't want necessarily every card to say Happy Valentine's Day. You want something that will work all year round. So I want to give you a couple of tips of how I approach this when I dig into my stash. So the first thing that I do is I separate my paper, uh, my larger pieces of paper from my smaller pieces of ephemera. And this way, when I am looking for pieces of ephemera, I have one specific pile that I can go through to find different items. And that's the pile that I'm pulling through right now. As you can see, there's a lot of little uh, bits and bobs that I can choose from so I can easily replace some of them if I don't like the way they necessarily look. Now for this one, I am going for a uh, Valentine's Day card, it looks like, because I do have the number 14 ticket there. And I found this little uh, paper doll that I was considering using, uh, but in the end, you're gonna see that it just didn't work. Now, as you can see, we're gonna have a lot of layers here. So if you are gonna add some lace, keep in mind that you don't necessarily have to wrap the card completely. You can add the lace to the edges uh, with some glue and then tie your bow. Your back side isn't gonna show. So if you just easily just put some glue um, on the edges and trim down the lace that you need, then you won't have the additional bulk. This particular lace isn't very bulky to begin with, but I wanted to share with you uh, that it is something that you wanna take into consideration when you are putting together layered cards or bulky cards in general, that if you can minimize the bulk in the back, that's always helpful. 
Another thing that I like to do, and I shared this tip with you during the Christmas crafting, is if I have any dies uh, that will put together cute little embellishments, I'll put those together ahead of time. So I had this little die from Sissix that I had uh, for several years that creates this little pocket envelope. And it's really cute to be able to put little sentiments or little cards into it. So I created a couple of those and I put those in my stash pile. Now lace and buttons are always great for your Valentine's Day cards. So if you have any of those, you're gonna certainly wanna pull those out as well and add them to your pile of embellishments so you can uh, choose those along your crafting journey. This lace that I'm using is great. I've had it for a few years now. It's uh, one of the items that I inherited from my mother-in-law and it's some really wonderful vintage lace. Uh, I do carry it in the shop, so if it's something that you want to uh, add to your stash, I'll leave some links below along with some of the items that I've used as well to create these cards. What I love about this lace is the ease in tying the bow. It's not very uh, stiff, I guess. Um, it's very, uh, it, it, you can easily create bows, that's what I'm trying to say. So it's one of the laces that I like to use, especially when I am going to tie a uh, bow onto my card. What's also great about this lace is it does flatten down really nicely. So if you are going to be putting it into a envelope, um, it will easily flatten down inside of your envelope. Now, of course, our Valentine's Day cards have to have hearts. So if you have any uh, dies that are heart shaped or even punches, it's always a good idea to get those punched out or uh, die cut out ahead of time. And again, add it to your embellishment stash. Another fun technique is to take your die cuts, especially if it's a little bit bigger, and put it through an embossing folder because then you're going to get some raised letters. I had a Valentine's Day embossing folder uh, from Tim Holtz that I've had for years, so I put a couple of these hearts through it and it gave me the raised letters. And because this heart is uh, very subtle, uh, the background is very light, I decided to add some of my walnut stain to the raised letters just to highlight them just a little bit more. And then as you can see here, I did swap out that little uh, wedding couple for this bigger couple. Um, well, friendship, I should say. It's not really a couple, um, but these two little kids that were together, um, which I thought was a great uh, little substitution. It kind of filled up the card a little bit more, and it can be a cute Valentine's Day card for a friend um, or even a neighbor, maybe, perhaps, um, but just something really cute that you can give to a, a younger Valentine. Now, I also had some of these sentiment quotes uh, that I grabbed from my shop, and these are some uh, literature quotes that I've grabbed. Um, I created this set years ago, and they're just some of my favorite quotes that were great for Valentine's Day cards, um, anniversary cards, uh, anything where you have some romantic uh, idea where you want to add some fun words. So there's several words that were great for Valentine's Day cards, and what I thought I would do this year rather than use the entire card, is I wanted to go ahead and cut these up and use these as little uh, quotes on my card. Um, and the type that I'm using, or I should say the font that I'm using is more like a vintage typewriter. So when you cut these up and add them to your card, they just look really great. Um, so that's what I decided to use uh, for my Valentine's Day cards this year. Now this particular quote says, two souls are sometimes created together and in love before they are born. And when I was looking through my quotes, I didn't want anything too romantic or too mushy because after all, these are just little kids, right? Um, but I thought this sentiment worked really well for this card just because it talked about uh, souls being in love before they were actually born. Um, and there are a lot of couples out there that actually have been sweethearts all of their lives. Um, so it is possible to find your soulmate young in life. Um, and I thought that this was a great quote for these two little paper dolls.
So I went ahead and I glued these down and then I also glued down my paper doll um, and then it was time for me to move on to my next card. Now for these cards, I'm just going to go ahead and create the layers. I'm not going to actually put the cards together. I'll do that off screen and I'll share some pictures with you at the end of the video. But I really just wanted to share with you uh, some ideas on how to get your Valentine's Day cards going uh, using some of the scraps in your stash. All right, so once I had my little paper doll glued down, um, I wanted to go ahead and move into a couple of other cards. And um, when you are making cards like this, it's great because you can go ahead and just kind of glue down your, uh, your top layer, put it aside, let it dry really nicely. And then once you have all of your top layers completed, then you can come back after the fact and add them to your card base. So this is a great way to uh, create several cards in one sitting and then again come back after the fact and put together the actual card base. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump into our second card. And for the second card, I am gonna go a little bit more romantic. This one was more of a fun, cutesy Valentine's Day card. But for the second card, I do want to go ahead and try to use that uh, bride and groom that I shared with you earlier. So for this one, I'm going to go with a deep red. And again, I'm just pulling from my stash. These are pieces that I've had for years. Um, so I'm just trying to match up some of my color combinations here because I do want to go with the deeper red. So once I figure out what paper combination I want to use, I'm just going to go ahead and just glue it down. This is going to be a very easy design where I'm going to let the designer paper do all of the work. So I'll use my three in one beacon. And again, uh, you've heard me rave about this over the last uh, year. Um, I love it because you're able to actually have some movement. So if you are having to line up something, uh, you'll have that movement time versus if you are using uh, some sort of tape, uh, a tape runner, then once you stick it, it pretty much is stuck. So once I have my background figured out, then I'm gonna come in with a bigger sentiment. And again, I am strategically looking for a bigger sentiment because I want to go ahead and use my smaller paper doll. So on the last card, um, as you saw, I had a lot of open space and these smaller paper dolls really didn't work. So for this one, I wanted to come in and make my sentiment the focal point, and then I'll have my paper dolls as an accent. All right, so remember, all of your Valentine's Day cards don't have to be very extravagant. You can easily just find some beautiful designer paper and let the designer paper do all the work for you. I'm gonna come in here with this one and add a larger sentiment for my focal point. And the sentiment that I'm gonna be using is a pink one, and I wanna say it's from Graphic 45. I've had it for years and it's been in my stash. So this year we're gonna actually give it uh, a purpose and we're gonna put it on a card. So before I actually do that, I wanna go ahead and distress my edges using my distressing tool. And then we're going to put it on the card. And rather than put it uh, just exactly straight, I am going to tilt it a little bit. I often like to tilt some of my items just to give it a little bit more interest. Now this sentiment is really pretty. It says, when I saw you, I fell in love and you smiled because you knew. Uh, it's just really cute and it works perfect with this bride and groom. As you can see, the sentiment is a little bit oversized, so that's gonna be my focal point. And then I'll come in with the bride just as an additional embellishment. Now, as you can see, these cards are very simple, and I like to do these uh, 
simple type of layout cards for you because I know a lot of you struggle with layering and for me it comes really easy. So I just wanted to continue to show you these videos to show you how easy it is. And you don't have to go out and buy lots of stamps. You don't have to buy lots of embellishments. If you have a few items in your stash, you can easily put together some really pretty cards. Um, and then if you use printables, you can print those over and over again. And that helps out with the storage in your craft room. That really is one of the reasons why I've started going towards principles because honestly, I've been, I've been crafting for so long. I have so many items and it can be a little bit overwhelming. And when I have items um, that are in a digital form or something that can be printed, um, then I let the computer do the storing for me. And then I can just have a few embellishments in my craft room. So ultimately that is what I'm working for. And that is why I'm pulling out a lot of my stash that I haven't used in years. And if it doesn't get used up this year, it's gonna go in the recycle bin. Now the little sentiment that I'm gonna use for this particular card, and again, this is one of my printables from the shop. It says, from the first moment that we touched, your arms felt like home. And if that's not a perfect sentiment for a bride and groom, I don't know what is. It just works really well. And even though I have the bigger sentiment as my focal point, uh, this added addition just really finishes off the card. And then once I get these glued down, I'm gonna add a couple of buttons just as added embellishment and then we'll be ready to move on to the last card. So as you can see, while this card would work perfectly for a Valentine's Day card, um, it could easily be used as an anniversary card, a birthday card, um, anything uh, that has a little bit of a romance uh, behind it. Um, so keep that in mind when you are making your Valentine's Day cards. Don't uh, create them all to just work for, for uh, Valentine's Day. Make them so they can be versatile and uh, be used all year round. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into our last card here. And this last card is gonna be just really simple. Um, we're gonna be using uh, pieces of ephemera. We're not gonna actually be using a paper doll on the last card, um, but it is a great card uh, that kind of has a little bit of a travel theme. Okay, so I know a lot of times when we think of uh, Paris, romance comes to mind. You've got that beautiful Eiffel Tower. So Paris is a great uh, theme for Valentine's Day cards or even just for birthday or anniversary cards. So that's kind of the theme I'm gonna go for on this last card. And um, I have some wonderful uh, ephemera pieces, again, that I've had for years uh, that were sitting in my stash that we're going to go ahead and use up this time. 
And I finally get to use that little envelope that I shared with you in the beginning. Um, and this was something that I created uh, a few days ago. Um, and I put one of the little sentiments on it. And it says, I never want to stop making memories with you. And that's why I think that this could be used for a travel card, um, an anniversary card, or even a birthday. Because um, it's not necessarily a focus on Valentine's Day card, right? It does have that romantic love theme going on but it's not necessarily a Valentine's Day card. So this is a true layered card. I'm just pulling pieces of ephemera and I am laying out my card before I glue, uh, just to make sure everything works. And as you can see, um, I'm trying different angles here. I'm trying to uh, look for the perfect aesthetic look. And I know some of you have asked me, how do I layer or how do I approach layering? And honestly, it's just a gut feeling when I'm putting together my layered cards. It's just when I know it's done, it's done. And when you're working with your layers, you're going to know when it's finished. You're going to know that you love the way that it looks. So just keep that in mind. Just pull out all of your scraps, um, things that you may or may not use, uh, and just put together a layered card and do what feels right. Do what works for you um, because that's how I approach it. And honestly, that really is why layering is one of my favorite techniques, because there's no right or wrong answer. Um, you can look at a stash of ephemera and come up with a completely different layout than what I would come up with. And um, so there's no right or wrong. It's just a matter of working with what you have and creating a look that's going to be ultimately what you love. So with all of my pieces chosen, it's now time to go ahead and add the glue and finish this layered card. So as you see, I went ahead and I added some walnut stain to the edges of my focal point just to give it a little bit more of a vintage look. And now we're going to go ahead and start gluing it down. Now for this last card, as you can see, I went straight in. I didn't tilt it, and that's because of the size of the piece. I wanted it to be a second background layer, not necessarily an ephemera piece. So I'm gonna go ahead and glue this straight down, and then we're gonna be adding our other smaller pieces of ephemera as embellishments. And then I finally got to use that little cute envelope that I had created because when I was uh, playing around with it, I saw that those tickets uh, for the Eiffel Tower fit perfectly in there. So that kind of uh, solidified my theme. Um, this was going to be sort of a Paris theme uh, with a trip or a ticket up to the Eiffel Tower. Um, so those tickets will fit perfectly in there and it just was really a great little addition. Now originally when I was playing with the tickets I just kind of stuck them in but then I thought if this card is going to do some traveling or if it ends up somewhere I didn't want my tickets to fall out so ultimately I did end up gluing them in uh, just to make sure that they would stay in place. And then uh, once I had my tickets in place then I did come in with uh, a bigger piece of ephemera, which was actually a stamp. So keep in mind, if you have some really pretty stamps, um, those make great ephemera pieces as well. So this is a stamp that said Cafe Arc de Triomphe Paris, and it had the Eiffel Tower with some uh, chocolate and some, just some words that would work uh, great for a Paris themed card. Um, and it was in a nice little label. So I went ahead and I used that as well. Um, and that pretty much finished off the card. So as I finished putting this together, I just wanted to leave you with a few thoughts as this is my last video for 2020. Um, I've been doing my YouTube videos for a while now. So um, I really appreciate all of your comments um, and all of your warm wishes uh, when I do make my videos. Um, occasionally I do get some thumbs down and I've come to the point where I just kind of laugh at those now because if someone wants to take, uh, you know, a few moments out of their day to leave me a thumbs down, I, I just have to appreciate that maybe they don't have much else to do. Um, but I do appreciate all of the positive comments that I do receive. And um, I do plan on continuing my videos in 2021. Um, I don't have any grand plan. I'm just going to continue doing what I love and sharing uh, that passion and that love with you. Um, I do hope to actually start doing my 
uh, mixed media journal again. I did that a few years ago. And recently I've had some people comment. Um, I guess they found the videos and they were binge watching and they asked me to start doing the pages again. So I might find that journal and start doing some mixed media pages again for you as well. Um, and then finally in 2021, I am going to have a challenge blog and I've mentioned that before. Um, but this is going to be an opportunity for you all to share your creations with me. So I do hope that you uh, check out the link that I'll leave in the, de the description below for the challenge blog that is starting uh, on January 2nd, I want to say. Um, it's the first Saturday of the year. Uh, so I, I'll go ahead and I'll leave the link below. And if you want to go ahead and subscribe to the blog, that way you'll be notified when a new challenge comes up every month. And like I said, it is going to be a monthly challenge. So any card that you create throughout the month, uh, just link it up, share it with us. I would love to see some of your creations. And I will continue to have a design team. So my design team will be offering up some inspirations um, using a monthly theme that you're welcome to play along with or just uh, go with it, anything goes. Um, so with that, um, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and hit the little bell as well because that'll notify you when my new videos come up. Um, and I will try to find links to all of the products that I've used. So that way, if you want to try to put together some of these cards as well you'll have some of the products that i've used um, but really your product is your stash so dig into your stash um, get organized before you start putting the cards together and sit down and do an assembly line you can easily put together several of these layered cards just using what is in your craft room so with that i wish you all a very happy uh, 2021 and I hope that you have a wonderful new year. So stick around to the end because I will be sharing some photos of my finished cards uh, with you. All right, everybody. Thanks so much for stopping by and we'll see you again next year.